outro music or some shit, or he'll no, put I, that in later. Yeah, I usually <laughs> edit everything. <clears throat> you're good. You're on. Oh, dope. Beautiful. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast, The Healy Cast. My guest is comedian from L.A. Why you go, Malachi, on that one? Man. Forgot, man. Why are you leaving us? You're looking uh, at yeah. that. What are you leaving us? How there dare you, you? There you go. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, today, I have a special guest. He's straight from L.A. He's it's a native. Special. <laughs> <laughs> guys, please help me welcome Jake Bassey. Jake? Jake? What's up, fuckers? What's up, What's up? sluts? How you doing? We're viewers going of the Healy full, cast. strong into this. Mm. Uh, let's start from the beginning. You're a native of Los Angeles. Yep. Born in UCLA Medical Center. Don't uh, don't pretend to be excited because it's really not. <laughs> wait, wait, so, uh, are the movies true? The, Did they depict LA correctly? Um, for the most part. Um, so the movies that are uh, accurate to what goes on in LA, um, to a certain degree, uh, the stuff that happens in Pulp Fiction. Okay. Uh, not like the gangster stuff. That's more like behind the curtain. Like you don't see that shit. Right. That's mostly like cholos and gangbangers and all that. That's on the um, that's on the south side of L.A. That's like the the L.A. that gets filmed in the movies is like Long Beach, Compton, right. uh, Crenshaw, like the ghetto basically. Right, right, right. Uh, and then there's uh, you know the Hollywood area and people who aren't from there like yourself think Hollywood oh glitz and glamour. Yeah. It is a shithole. Really? Hollywood is garbage. And in the last 10 to 11 months or so, it has gotten exponentially worse. Where I'm from I could is... I could imagine that because of COVID-19 yeah. and uh, whatnot. Uh, from, just from listening to Joe Rogan, he had to get out of there because mm-hmm. of the tent cities, basically. Happening. Yeah, he lives, uh, he lives in an area called Thousand Oaks, which is just... It's in L.A. County, but it's just north of where all of this stuff is. It's, he lives in, like, a rich white people neighborhood. And, um... <laughs> I grew up in a place called the San Fernando <coughs> Valley, and uh, the San Fernando Valley is kind of like, uh, uh, kind of like half suburb, kind of like half ghetto, like chateau ghetto. Okay. I, I grew up in an apartment building that didn't have a code to get in. So and, is it kind of yeah. like Cobra Kai, like a little bit, re- like a uh, Daniel Sun? Okay. Yeah. So get this, uh, Cobra Kai, uh, not Cobra Kai, the the Karate, the karate kid, kid that yeah. was filmed in Reseda, where I grew up. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's the, cool. The apartment buildings there, that that is that's my neighborhood. Um, System of a Down went to my high school. Uh, not what? at the same time. No, of no, no. Right, right, right. Um, but that's System whoa. of a Down went to my high school, uh, Grant High School, and uh, a lot of bands came out of L.A. I'll tell you one there. band that came out of here from mm-hmm. my high school: the All American Rejects. The All American Rejects came from. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! They're from uh, so Tyson Ritter and the lead guitarist is from Stillwater themselves. The drummer and the bass are from Norman and uh, Guthrie, I believe. So oh nice! They're out of Oklahoma, which is that that's the claim to fame. For we got Metallica, <laughs> Megadeth, Slayer. Jesus, okay, <laughs> I get it, man. You have yeah. better bands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Um, there is a negative stereotype about people from L.A., from California, is that we think we're better than everyone else. That's what I've heard. Um, and that is something that I'm trying to work on. <laughs> I, I'm really trying to work on that because I'm I'm a strong four over there. Really? And I'm about a seven here, as far as I can tell. Yeah, but, but I like right. it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, have you ever, like, dreamed about, like, moving to L.A.? Have you, like, thought well, about that? Well, since I started the comedy career and everything about probably eight, nine months ago, mm-hmm. My goal is to get to the comedy store. Like, that's the holy grail for all comedians, I feel like. So you started right when COVID started? Let's see, in March, April, May, June, around oh, June. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Luckily, I'm everything so sorry. stayed open here. So, I well, mean, that's it, good. It, it didn't, like, hurt that's good. too bad, but... Well, uh, in a way, it's kind of a good thing, because this way you get to start slow. Right. Um, uh, for me, I've been doing it two years. Uh, I started taking it seriously, uh, two years ago, so I was a year in, and then it all went to shit. And I'm like, oh, I gotta start over. But now. you, uh, so f- just rewind real quick. You've mm-hmm. grown up kind of in that entertainment business, and mm-hmm. uh, just hearing you talk to other comedians and politics and around and everything, you, yeah, you've been around that scene all your life. I started, I started super early. I actually started when I was fourteen. <clears throat> uh, my first, the part, fir- fir- my first time doing stand up, I was at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood, which is like. Um, kind of second fiddle to the comedy store. I was store. just about, there's the comedy, guys, just pointing this out real quick. There's mm-hmm. the comedy store, then uh, improv, and then um, the 
Laugh Factory, Laugh Factory there's and Flappers, Factory. there's the Ha Ha Cafe. Are there's those a, still open? Uh, no. Okay. None of them are open. Even the Comedy Store? Mm-mm. Really? Not for shows. Um, they had um, they had something. They they tried. They they were doing like live podcasts or live stand up shows behind a glass wall. where people could just kind of yeah. walk past. You could kind of walk past and kind of see what was going on, but seating was extremely limited. You know, mask up, all that stuff. Cool, good. But right. it's getting like, it was getting too extreme because there's a restaurant right next to the comedy store called mm. the Saddle Ranch. They have outside seating. The restaurants with outside seating were able to go, right. but because the comedy store is an entertainment venue and not a restaurant, they, they couldn't be open. So the fucked up part is that it's the entertainment capital of the world, but entertainment is last on the list. Like, what the fuck? Like, it, it's just, it makes no sense. And uh, Entertainment is number one in the world, yeah, but last Yeah, it was last COVID. on the list. It, it didn't make any fucking sense at all. We and, need um, laughter during this time. Like I, I, yeah, we really not do. Not even just laughter, but entertainment, because I've literally watched what twice, three, four times all the seasons of Family Guy. I'm, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I can't. Yeah, I it, need it's more over. material. So, uh, I was I, my first set ever was at the Laugh Factory. Uh, what happened was uh, my friend's dad signed me up for like a kind of a youth stand up like actors program, and it wasn't really about stand up. I'm a nervous person, and it was more for public speaking, just to get up in front of people and talk. Right. Only this time, you have to tell jokes. Uh, uh, what more fuck? <laughs> yeah, very nerve wracking. So um, uh, there was uh, there was a guest comic for like six weeks, and uh, Tony I, I, Rock, Chris Rock's brother. Okay, uh, I was gonna ask if there are any big names. Tony big Rock's names. a very good name. Okay. Big names. Uh, Lisa Ann Walter, who later became my mentor. That's we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, Bob Saget. Whoa. Um. Uh, Alonzo Bowden. Sounds familiar. Yeah, I, I know yeah, who you're talking. Yeah, about. I, I, I'm not pronouncing his name right. I don't think, but he, he's like six foot four, deep voice, black dude. It's B-O-W-D-E-N, I believe. Yeah, is like, yeah, I know who you're talking um, about. Week five was supposed to be Dave Chappelle, but at this time, that was when Chappelle's show had just left. Le- okay. And he, you know, we didn't know what was going on. Um, Holy the cow. fifth week was a guy named Fraser Smith. He was like a radio guy from okay. from from back then. And uh, the sixth week was the final week. That was our graduation. We, uh, uh, it was like me, 14, like a bunch of other teenagers. The oldest was like 17, I think. And everybody was going to do five minutes, and it was going to be like an hour showcase. Wow. Everybody does five minutes. And it's kids, you know, it, it's all clean humor right, right, right. and all that. And uh, I didn't listen. <laughs> I didn't want to be clean. Really? I was towing the edge of, you know, clean, of clean. And, yeah. Okay. My friend told me, uh, my friend's dad told me to tell this joke about Fraser Smith. I didn't understand the joke, and it's not my joke. Okay. And uh, that was the first lesson in, like, you know, don't use other people's jokes. But the thing is, I was baited into saying it. And, uh, I mean, I kind of took liberties with it because, like, it was all for fun. So... The joke is, oh, Fraser Smith is here. Uh, He's been fired from every radio station that starts with a K. Big fucking laugh. I didn't get that. Apparently, he had been fired from many radio stations throughout his whole career and has bounced around from station to station. Apparently, his big ego is really wild or whatever. But what's what's with the K? Just because a whole bunch of radio stations? K starts with, uh, like most radio stations, K-Rock, K-Earth 101, like K-This, K-That. And like that, that's the joke. And uh, the owner of the Laugh Factory, Jamie Masada, fell out of his chair. Jamie Masada, that sounds very, very familiar. He's the owner of the of the Laugh Factory it in still Hollywood. Still is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he fell out of his chair, and that's like that's the bucket list to make right. the owner of the joint like just he fell out. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I, and everyone is just, I've destroyed the room. Everybody's laughing, but I don't get it. <laughs> I legit do not get right, like right. the context. You're 14 of the joke. years old. You're not I'm getting 14, the context. Right. I don't get the context, and I'm like, oh wow, everybody's laughing. I'm like, but wait, this isn't my joke. Is this really like mine? Like, so wait, yeah. was it your friend's dad's joke? He it was my it? friend's okay. dad's joke. He told me okay. to say it, okay. and I'm like, okay, I'll say it. You know, right, right, right. And uh, it, he's he's told me to like, oh, say it like this. He, he's like, you know, crafting. He, he coached you. He basically. coached me through yeah. it. So uh, that got me into something that uh, it's a habit that I broke, but it happens from time to time. It's called sponge braining. Um, 
this is something that happened to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. It's not stealing on purpose. Right. It's yeah. it, it's just it's in your brain, and the premise is similar. The punchline is similar. You don't mean it. You heard it somewhere. Right. I've it's happened to me before. I fall asleep to Joe Rogan, so I would unconsciously like absorb. Information. I, I believe I've done it a few times, honestly, mm-hmm. because Tristan McGinnis brought up to me, like, the first night I ever did comedy, mm-hmm. I told him a Pete Davidson joke, basically, about the Magic Johnson jersey okay. that he has. And I I apparently said it verbatim on oh. that night. Okay. Not on purpose, but it's my like, first jitters, first set ever I did. Mm-hmm. And then I went back and worked with it and changed it to mm-hmm. my capability, but the punchline was the same. Yeah. And someone told me, you still can't do that just because it's so similar. Yeah, you just have so. to change the way it's said. Um, there, There's many, many jokes about like time travel and jokes about drinking right. and smoking weed. Uh, very common premises, things like online dating, that things of that nature, stuff that people think about all the time. So what you have to do is um, you have to, you know, when you're watching someone's act, someone that inspires you, is that you have to watch the act from a different angle. You have to watch it. You watch. T- you have to watch how it's being said, not necessarily what is being said. Okay. It's kind of like um, you're you're watching the performance on a technical level. You catch my drift? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're not the audience. You're more of a right. Okay. You're 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 not the audience. You're you're studying. Right, you're, you're, you're taking watching. notes. You're, you're yeah, wa- you're, you're taking notes. You're going. It's okay. like you're in a college class, basically. Yes. and you're taking notes and making so sure. So, how is the joke being said? What is the lead up to this? Is it a story? Like, so is the, the longer the story, the funnier the joke has to be. You know, is okay. there a, is there a tag after that? You know, there's there's certain like building blocks. This is the stuff that I learned very early on. And, and I'm still I'm still learning all this. Kind yeah, of stuff. and thing is, and you're starting during like the worst fucking time to start, <laughs> honestly. So I mean, at the same time, it's actually kind of good for me yeah. because we don't have that big of a crowd. Right. So like, I'm not like too nervous. Once crowds start coming back, that like I don't I hate public speaking, mm-hmm. and I chose this. <laughs> well, a, a technical note that I have for you is, uh, uh, and I noticed that is that um, uh, you're uh, you're learning to trust your stuff. And uh, a con to this is that you're trying your material out in a small scene. So you're, for the most part, performing in front of people that have seen you before. Correct. Not necessarily like, you know, crowds like at Bricktown or, or Looney Bin or whatever. Yep. I would suggest Looney Bin um, just because... How is Looney Bin? I haven't been there yet. I like it. I like it because of the structure. Um, get there early, okay. sign up for the open mic, and then they have the show. Uh you you basically get a free lesson out of it. You get to watch the feature, and the headliner. Oh, that's right. They yeah. Uh, the headliner comes in on Wednesdays. Yes. And then stays till what Sunday? Yeah. Roughly give or take. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So okay. go to go to the Looney Bin instead of Bricktown, because uh, the thing is with Brick, like I like Bricktown, but the thing is like there's just too many fucking people. I agree. There's just way like, too many people. And I I think Bricktown is like the hot spot for mm-hmm. the comedians. It's downtown. Every, yeah. Like everything's going on. And Looney Bin is right off at Northwest. Yeah, North it is North a hot spot. So. Uh, what makes Looney Bin a little bit better is that you could get you could get noticed by the feature or the headliner. I got a fist bump from the feature act, so I won in my eyes. Yeah. So like, you know, I'm not on their radar or anything like no, that. But you but, Keep going, and you, you know you. they start paying attention. And you have to trust your stuff. Uh, do you wear a hat on stage all the time? No. No. Um, if you're gonna wear a hat on stage, make sure the bill is like kind of facing up. More up. Because okay. if you tell a joke and it doesn't go well and you bomb, you look down. Gotcha. That's what people do in general. You look down, and then the bill of the hat hides, hides your, your face, face. Okay. and then they can't see you. If you're gonna bomb, bomb with confidence. Gotcha. You know, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. let it just let it happen because that's how you get better. Okay. Um, every time I bomb, I learn something from it. I'm like, oh, that joke worked at uh, the club, but the same joke didn't work at the bar show. Right. Because it's a different, it's a different, different audience. audience. It's not because the joke shut. The, the joke does not suck. Okay. The joke just does not work for that room. So, like, gotcha. if a joke bombs, you know, don't throw it away. But if it keeps bombing and bombing no matter what room you do, obviously, it's time to change it, right. you know. So Restructure it, maybe. Restructure it, you know, change it, and, uh, you know, uh, just... It's it's a trial by fire. You just have to keep going. So just real quick, I'm working on a joke. Like uh, I had a abduction joke mm-hmm. because when I first started, it, the Epstein thing was like fire and um, still is. 
it's not as much uh, like uh, the Wayfair thing was too. So mm-hmm. at that time, I would just tell like I was abducted in 1996, stuffed into a Wayfair box, and it was killing for a minute. Mm-hmm. And then I tried it just like a few weeks ago, and I believe Austin Slaughter's like you're gonna have to ditch the whole Wayfair thing because that's not really current anymore. Mm-hmm. It's like that that makes sense. So with the whole, I've done the adoption joke and changed it up. Mm -hmm. And then I just, like, added a piece to it where it's, like, how do you, like, uh, I got smuggled into this country the most white way ever. Mm -hmm. Bribery. Bribery? Oh, my God. (laughs) That's good. I was smuggled out of the country, and my mom and dad had to pay to get me here, so... Mm -hmm. That's good. You could even go even more absurd. Did this act this actually happened to you? you oh, hundred. You... This is a real true oh, shit. story. Yeah, uh, my parents had to pay uh, two hundred dollars and uh, get two cartons of uh, Pall Mall Blues in Romania and give it to an ATF uh, uh, agent oh, to get wow. me through security because my paperwork at the time was no good at all. Mm-hmm. Because at that time, Turkey and Romania were fighting over a piece of land, apparently. So technically, my country was in turmoil. Also, communism was falling at the yeah. same time. So, like, I didn't really have a country at Damn. that point. Damn, son. So they had to just basically smuggle me out of the country. Like, the adoption is 100% legal, mm-hmm. but getting me out of the country was not. And when I turned 18, I had to get my uh, citizenship. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn, son. Is this the, uh, this is therapeutic for you as well to like talk about this yeah, kind of stuff? It's I, like I, I it's, it's like... dark, fucked up stuff, you know. <laughs> and you know, if we can laugh at it, you know, it's it's a healing process. You know, you've you've heard my material about me not knowing my father. Like I've yeah. met him a couple of times. Have like you... but I don't really have a relationship with him. I sort of take poetic license with the one hundred percent truth of the matter. Um, is that as long as it's funny, who fucking cares how right. accurate it is? Uh, you know, so you can you can sort of take liberties with the accuracy of the story, but it's your story. Right. So you can kind of twist it to a funnier angle, you know. So like fib here and there. And yeah, just little things like, you know, you were scratching at a ship container or something. Right, like that. Right, right, right. Just something absurd. You know, you, you could take a more absurd angle because it's a very dark issue that some people take like seriously. But if you make it. If you make it just silly, you know, y- it, it. It, it's easier to uh, have the have the subject matter come across like like rape jokes, for example. Those are hard to pull Those off. Those are really hard. To Those pull are off. really hard to pull off. But uh, I feel I, like, I, like mm-hmm. I've stuck. a. W- Sorry for interrupting. No, go ahead. I, I feel like if uh, with rape jokes, like if you haven't experienced it, that's just this mm-hmm. is just me. If you haven't gone through that trauma. I don't want to touch it. You know, I've right. never been through that t- uh, type of trauma. So I try not to touch things that I haven't gone through. Like the adoption thing, I've gone through that. So yeah. that's why I'm touching that. Um, like, w- that's why I quit with AIDS. I don't have fucking AIDS. So I'm not going to tell the yeah, joke if, either. If you, so. don't, if you don't have the experience, you know, then then uh, go go with what's most, most true to you. Because then you can draw more from it. I'll and love, and that's it's better for you that way. A lot of comedians have been telling me, like, just open yourself up. Like, the, mm-hmm. the crowd wants to like you. Like, you're yeah. a likable person. It's just you're, like, hiding something from them still. Yeah. And you just start making fun of yourself. And, I, like, recently I've just stopped writing material and gone up and winged a lot of it. Just mm-hmm. because, like, I don't know. I just mm-hmm. want to, like, find myself on stage first and all, not, all you, that. You'll be able to find the occasional gold nugget by, by riffing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's a good muscle to develop because later down the road, the longer you keep doing this, um, say let, let's say one day, six, seven years from now, you're a feature act in some other fucking town that you've never been to, right. and you need to riff on some some regional humor, some local stuff, okay. you know? So uh, my L.A. regional humor is not going to work here. No, obviously you know, it's not. It's not going to work. So uh, I have to learn how to... You know, I have to explore Oklahoma a little bit right, and you... get a, open with a couple of regional jokes because if I'm going to do a crowd and most of them are from here, I got to get them to like me. So you got an understanding. I of... got to understand right. where they're from. So uh, you would then have to riff on, say, I don't know what the fuck's happening in Omaha, you know, something right. like that. So you kind of have to write on stage. So riffing is good, but don't fall too much into it because uh, you're you're here. You're you know, you're in Oklahoma. So uh, tighten up uh, what works for you. The riffing stuff is, is good if, you, if you're just not, like, feeling it that night or whatever. You don't have to feel it every night. Right, right. 
but it, it's 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 good. Uh, crowd but, work but is keep, another thing. But too. keep yeah. writing as well. Keep writing, yeah. Um, I try to write two minutes every week. Two minutes every week. I, I write two minutes every week, and okay. uh, that stuff uh, goes up on my YouTube channel. Shameless plug: Jaking Off Show YouTube.com. Absolutely. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Tell all your friends. Um, so I write two minutes every week, and uh, so two minutes a week times fifty-two weeks. That's uh, that's two hours. Yeah, it is. Cut the fat, chew the fat. You know, get it down to the bone. Get it down to the bone. Uh, you know, obviously you're gonna cut some jokes that don't work. So right. a lot, a lot of it's topical humor. Like uh, I didn't have anything to write about the week of the the rioting at the Capitol. Right. I didn't have anything, so I'm like. Oh, there's my subject. I was writing jokes about that shit I, as it happened. I remember mm. I remember you going on stage that night and just killing it mm. about that. I was like, that's hilarious what you did. Like uh, because it's so fresh, it's so new. Yeah. I wanted to write something about it, but I'm like, I don't know. Like a lot of comedians told me just stick to what I know, like yeah. working on cars or yeah. you know, washing cars because that's what I fucking do. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean I'm talent like I'm impressed with a lot of the comedians in the scene and you have blown me away a lot just oh, thank with you. like what you have done. Mm. So the the topical stuff, uh, the downside with topical humor is that they do expire. Yes. You know, not yeah. they don't last all the time. Like hey, god, when I was like 16 I had jokes about the Bush administration or whatever the fuck, you know. That that shit's not funny anymore cuz that was that was You can still That was 3 presidents ago. You can still <laughs> talk about Bush, but mm -hmm. it's just it's got to be related to now. Yeah. I, I have a rant. Uh, I mean, it's not necessarily funny, but it's more of like an angry rant about uh, everything that happened past Y2K. So it's like, oh, Y2K, like that should have happened. Like, oh, we had 9-11, Bush, again, Iraq, again. Ah, well, this sounds familiar. Like, it's, right. And it's not necessarily like a criticism. It's just the insanity of like, it's just been one or the other, like over the past 30 years. And it's, it's fucking absurd. And like, oh, um... Grandpa Biden was saying shit like, oh, we've never been so divided. I'm like, bitch, we've always been divided. <laughs> like, it's been Republican, Democrat, like, every ever other, since. Ever, it's, it's, the other side gets pissed off, and they rally, and right. they vote for that guy, and that's what happens. It it's, just goes back it's and forced forth. To, it's always been that way. I'm like, exactly. what the fuck are you talking about, man? We had separate water fountains for white people and black people less than 70 years ago. Yeah. Like shut up! Like it's it's and just it crazy. seems like we're actually going back to that too in a yeah. way because uh, just recently Harvard just had an all black graduation class. Yeah, yeah, I read about that. That's crazy. It's like, um, it, it's it's woke racism is it, it, so I've been told. Jeez, it, it's getting it's getting crazy. And this is the stuff like you know you're gonna get into political hot water mm -hmm. and it's divisive in nature. Um, I don't take that route in my act per se, right. but you need to make fun of both because it's just, and you have to pay attention to the news enough to where, not to where you make yourself crazy, but you, you just need to stay informed, stay sane, and you know, you'll come up with at least a minute and a half of like topical humor that you can open with because uh, people want to escape the bullshit in the world, right, right. That, but it can't that, go ignored. Right, you can't ignore what's going on in the world, but at the same time, people are there for entertainment. Right. It's just kind of like sports. Like people are escaping the real world to go watch a sports event. Mm -hmm. They're not there to see you protest. That's getting on a whole different subject. Yeah, that's but a like, whole other thing. Like you get what I'm saying. It's just mm -hmm. let's stick to one thing and yeah, it may come up, but yeah. It's all out of for comedy wise, it's all out of entertainment. We're yeah. not trying to hurt people's feelings, but we're just like yeah, it's never out of malice. So, so that's yes. why LA is kind of tough because uh, people get people do get offended very easily. That's over there. yeah, that's it, what I you're figured. walking on eggshells in LA, and um, I feel like that would probably be like New York too. You would. Be. Uh, I don't or know. Is that more... I, I wouldn't know because I haven't been. I mean, I've I've been, but not for comedy. Okay. I went to college in New York. Uh, it, it doesn't really count. I was doing like Shakespeare and shit. I was like studying acting stuff what, what, in New York. What school did you go to in New York? Oh, God. I went to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. Why did you say also, it like that? I because mean... it's a scam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted $40,000 of my life to go learn how to wear tights and fight with a sword and, and, and you say, know. where art thou? Yeah, all okay. that shit. But the thing is, I did get laid a lot. I was like one of maybe eight straight guys in the whole school. Holy shit. Yeah, so it was fun. But, you know, I was at the <laughs> bottom of the barrel, but that was all they had to get to. So these I, chicks would look at a guy and go like, oh, he's cute, but he's gay. And then they look at guys like me and go, oh, I guess he'll do. God. <laughs>
But the, LA seems very sensitive and, and and like liberal and all that, and probably so is New York too. And if uh, if you ever thought about going there, um, don't. Which one, Just, New York or LA? Or uh, both? Well, New York's tougher, uh, but New York in LA at least you can get a roommate and cheat and like have and like be warm and starve. Right. You yeah. know, with New York you can't really get a roommate. It's very it's a smaller living space. Uh, but, uh, you know, because of the pandemic and all that, give it five years, honestly. I plan to live around here maybe five years and really? maybe, maybe it'll come back. I don't know. Um, I kind of want to live like the nomadic life. I don't really want to live in the same place twice. Um, L.A. is fun. I lived there my whole life. I grew up there. But it's just it, it, they're really showing their colors now. It, it's just getting insane. Like like uh, you telling uh, gay jokes, depending on the room, you will get canceled. Like you will get banned from certain the, the rooms. Club and there are open mics wow. uh, that that do like you know LGBT night or whatever, and uh, you know you do your material. But if you've got a gay joke, they'll just they'll just mm -hmm. sneer at you. But like you said, it's never it shouldn't be out of malice. Right, it's not out of malice. We're all it's jokes. This it's is a place all, where it's entertainment. Yeah, words cannot <laughs> hurt us. Everything's fine. But, you but know, words do hurt. We apparently. are straight white men and right. uh, we can't make fun of everyone. I thought we wanted to be equal. So why can't everyone be made fun of equally? Roast me. Call me Vanilla Isis. Call me an insurrectionist. <laughs> ISIS, I don't give a fuck. Great. That, someone called me an insurrectionist on the Internet. And I mean, like I was a little hurt by it because this person wasn't a comic that told me that. So it's a little different, but I was like, okay, I was taking it in jest like for the first time mm -hmm. ever I've noticed on Facebook. I made I made just like a simple comment about a political thing that's mm -hmm. going on and it was directed toward native not directed, but it was about native Americans. I was just uh -huh. like commenting on the pipeline or something and someone's like you're a racist for saying that. I was like, holy oh cow, God. I have never been called a racist. I was just explaining my point of view here. Like yeah. I'm not saying, you know, native Americans should die or like, you know, any of that. That's gonna be clipped, and someone's gonna <laughs> fucking yeah, turn that into Yeah, someone's gonna something. clip that. And like, she's like, uh, <laughs> ship it no, off to China, right. sell it. <laughs> but like, um, no, it's just like I have never had that kind of hate directed towards me. And the funny thing is, like, uh, I've been thinking about this. People are like, you've never been judged on the color of your skin, mm -hmm. but in reality, we have. Yeah, you and I have been. It's different. It is different. It's different. I've been picked last on the team. Yeah, you know, it's it's not it, you know it's not I'm not fearing for my life. You know, I'm never gonna understand uh, you know other sides of racism in the true sense of the word, but we experience it uh, in different ways. Right. And uh, there's another thing: context. Everyone thinks they're a political analyst and they're an expert. Everyone thinks they're a fucking stockbroker now. Everyone's, I am a stockbroker. What are you, you talking about? You are a stockbroker. <laughs> Reddit oh told me to. Reddit told you. <laughs> Dogecoin to the moon, man. Dogecoin. But just like everyone, everyone thinks that that they're an expert, and everyone, uh, you know, is walking on eggshells on the internet because people are so sensitive. But like, say that to my face, right? Yeah, you know, it's this this kind of conflict is not going to happen on a person to person basis. People are actually very fucking quiet when it comes yes. to a confrontation. When it's, a, when it's in person, yeah. people don't want confrontation. But when it's on the internet, it's yeah. Everywhere. And I'm a pacifist. I hate conflict. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, like fighting. I, I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not about that shit. No. I'm actually like super careful because uh, I have a disclaimer on the top of my Facebook going like, I make jokes about things that I, I don't do necessarily that. believe in. Right. They don't reflect my opinions or beliefs. I'm just making fun of stuff. So I have a lot of libtard boomer friends. <laughs> um, I love them. They're they're wonderful people. No, absolutely. And, and uh, you know the orange man is bad, and he's been bad forever. And, you know, I, I don't really like them either, but, you know, I'll give credit where credit is due. Right. But the thing is, they loved posting the memes and the jokes about Trump. And now that he's gone, gone. I am so happy that those that the Trump jokes are gone, too. It's but getting tiring. But they're not making fun of Biden. I'm like, this is not fair. Make fun of him, too. Right. Why not? Like, you were on a roll. Exactly. Why but not? He's like, like, oh, be nice. And I was like, hey, guys, be nice to Joe Biden. He's already been through one civil war. <laughs> and someone was like no boo and i'm like it's a joke. joke oh my god i've noticed that about even like uh mm -hmm. news media like news media was trashing trump obviously mm -hmm. through all four years and now that biden has only been in office three three weeks almost a month yeah, yeah he's a saint yeah doing everything yeah i'm not trying to turn this into a political podcast but yeah. you know like it's like if you're gonna give a president shit 
give mm-hmm. where shit is due. Right. What he's doing too. Like not everything he's doing is good for the country. Yeah. You know. Like, so do we keep the space force or? I have no are idea. We keeping that? Malachi, what? He's the one to answer. Yeah. Malachi, are we keeping the space force? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I hope so. Seems like a good That's idea. Such a troll. It is yeah. Good. Did you know? Did you realize that? I thought about that. So every time Biden mm-hmm. goes up and speaks, that Space Force flag that Trump implemented will always be there behind him. Yeah. And it's just like, I did that. You yeah. Know? It's like, cool. Cool. Good. <laughs> I mean, because uh, initially I thought like, oh, oh, because Trump's got a loud mouth, right? And I'm thinking like, oh, fuck, dude, the aliens are fucking real. It's only a matter of time before the loud orange man says something, you know, but it, he might be saying the secret thing out loud and then he'll get fucking kennedy you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> so I, I think... I think the Space Force is like a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink to like, hey, uh, there's something out there and we got to fight them. We don't know what they are or what they look like, but uh, something's out there. I just want like, <laughs> I want battleships to look like, you know, the Empire battleships. Maybe. Star Wars. Maybe not in our lifetime, but. Uh, I, I'd join the Force if we get Stormtrooper you, outfits. You join the, the Space Force? Dude. Oh, God. If it means I can <laughs> wear the armor like a Stormtrooper, yeah, absolutely. You know, the Stormtrooper armor was based off of the Nazi armor. Or okay, no, I take, Va- it, Vader, I take it back. No, 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 no. I'm Vader lying to would, you. Vader's would, helmet yeah. is based off of the Nazi helmet, but the stormtrooper is like a lot, a lot loosely uh, based. A, yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, George Lucas. Yeah, well, was, they're just accentuating who the bad guys are. Exactly. You know, that that that's all it is. Mm. The color scheme also. The color scheme. Yeah. So if you notice in Star Wars, the color scheme uh, with the em- uh, Emperor's uh, bodyguards red, mm-hmm. it stood for communism. Oh shit. Yeah. If you actually. Oh wow. Look, yeah, because all the that. red, yeah. even in the uh, new three movies that came mm-hmm. out, the red... New three movies. New, uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know. But uh, that's what implements communism. Red has always kind of been the communist party. Like, look at yeah. Red China, look at Russia's flags. They're red. Mm-hmm. So that's how, like, even the Nazi emblem was red. Red, yeah. So that's... Well, uh, we have red, too. Not all red, no, but like there's red. there's red in it. Yeah, yeah, but we're stripes. Yeah, we got a little blue there too. <laughs> there's, a, there's actually a psychological thing to the color red that they're probably looking at more than like the wording definition. There's just a psychological imprint on people, like a yellow for McDonald's or fast food makes so you hungry. Yeah, it's an it's an attractive color. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yellow and red uh, makes you hungry. Probably doesn't have a whole lot to do with red means communism. <laughs> All right, let's stop talking about this because now I am getting hungry. Red means <laughs> hunger <laughs> yeah. for the bullet proletariat. <laughs> so, I love it. Um, you started at fourteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've been doing it since fourteen. Not true. Not no. Uh, not completely true. Uh, so I, I I did start at fourteen. And I got snuck into uh, little like showcase shows with you know legends. I, I did shows with Whitney Cummings right before she blew up. Holy shit. Um, but she she was like really skinny, and then she disappeared for a couple of years. And I was like, oh, maybe she died. And then <coughs> she was on like billboards and shit. Uh, I've worked with not worked with. That's such a loose term. Uh, I've done shows with uh, with her, uh, Stephen Pearl, a guy named Fat James, God rest his soul. Um, and like just other guys in the LA scene, right? And uh, I did that till about like sixteen, seventeen. Uh, I was doing, I was exposed to very dirty humor at at an age I was still a minor, and my mom hated it. Mm. Uh, she discouraged me from it. Um, she was really pressing on the, you're not funny. Um, you can't even vote yet. Why are you doing jokes about George Bush? Why are you joking about stuff you don't understand? Like I'm just absorbing stuff, right. and I'm and like I'm joking about sex. I'm joking about drugs, and I haven't done. I didn't do either until my senior year of high school, and I I fell off and I stopped for about twelve years. Wow. Yeah, I hung up my because I went to college to go focus on uh, the art, being an right. actor okay. and all that. I got my degree, which is fucking useless. Um, <laughs> Did like little dinky hundred dollar a day short films. I was gonna I've, ask you if you actually. I've done extra that. work, you know. I've I've met people. What's the biggest that. movie you did at extra in? Um, it was a movie called Hail Caesar. Okay. Uh, it was a Coen Brothers film. It came out yeah. I think in like twenty sixteen. Okay. I want to say, yeah. Um, it was small stuff, mostly student films. Uh, okay. nothing of note. I did play a murderer on one of those fucking like murder reenactment shows that nobody watches. Oh fuck um, yeah, that okay. was fun. Uh, but, uh, I, I did that for a while and then, um, th- this is, this is where fate comes in. Uh, I started working at this yogurt store and, uh, 
Lisa Ann Walter, who I mentioned earlier, right. uh, who became my mentor, her son started working at the yogurt store. I didn't know that they were related. related. So, uh, you know, I, I made friends with my coworker. He was like 10 years younger than me. He's just a kid. We were into the same type of music and all that stuff. We got along fine. And then she comes into the store one day and he goes like, oh, that's my mom. We're going to hook her up with a, with a free yogurt because we can get away with shit like that. Right. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I've seen, I, I've, I know her. I've seen you before. And she was like, oh, you might have seen me in like a movie or something. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Not that. Like, I know you've been in Bruce Almighty. I know you're Chessie right. from the Parent Trap and all, and all that shit. But I've, we've met. And, and she goes like, and, and we're both looking at each other and we're both like, the Laugh Factory. Like, you taught me comedy That's at awesome. the Laugh Factory. And she's like, yeah! So L.A. is kind of a small town still. It kind of is. It, it, like, all comics know each other. It, it is and it isn't. You know, if you work in a similar field, you're going to bump into the same right. people. And she's like, oh, my God, I remember you. Are you still doing comedy? I'm like, no, I gave up. It's hopeless. And then she's like, no, nonsense. Get back into it. Get back into it. And this was, like, late 2018. Um, I had been going through a, a dark time. Uh, I've experienced life uh, a little bit. I've suffered, um, okay. and I need to joke about these things. Uh, I had been sober for a year. Um, my father is the reason why I drink, you know, all my problems and all that, and uh, therapy is expensive. Yeah. It's very expensive, but stand-up comedy is cheap. <laughs> very cheap. And in L.A., it's pay-to-play. You gotta pay five bucks to do five minutes. That's what, okay, yeah. so I, um... <clears throat> was it Sid Hammond mm -hmm. I had on, and I mentioned to him that Mark Norman mentioned when he was in New York, he had to pay $5 to do only like two or three minutes. Yep. At least LA, mm -hmm. you're paying for the five minutes. So yeah, it's you're a dollar for the a minute, minutes. basically. It, well, it depends. Some places, it's a uh, dollar a minute or, or, you know, $10 for 10 minutes, whatever you want to do. Sometimes you got to buy a drink, but that drink ends up being five bucks anyway. Right. So it kind of evens out. But Really? Five dollars in LA? That's yeah. pretty that's pretty cheap for LA, huh? Yeah. Uh <laughs> depends on the beer. Depends on the on the beer. If it's you know, if you're getting a ginger ale, it's three or whatever. If you want to have a couple drinks in you, you know, you, you do a little more. But uh you gotta support the business. It's also very expensive to live out there. So like, yeah. Yeah, my job, I was making fifteen dollars an hour. Sounds great, right? Not when the rent is two fucking thousand dollars a month. Jesus. Yeah. All these this liberal haven, like, oh, fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, sure. It's fifteen dollars is great here. Right. Yeah. Not there. Not there. It doesn't work out. But anyway, um, she, uh, Lisa was like, hey, you got to do comedy again. I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. So, uh, and you're going to love this shit. Uh, I, start, I start doing open mics uh, like a couple months into the game. And uh, I find out that the club Flappers in Burbank has open auditions on Wednesdays. Ooh. I get a, I get a lip, I, I, I bite the bullet and I'm going to go for it. I've been working on my tight five for a couple of months. I believe in it. I've bombed several times. I've crushed several times. So I'm like, okay. We're just gonna we're gonna sign up for the open audition and we're gonna do it and maybe we'll get past. Now, it's an open audition in a big city. The line was going down the block. Jesus. I had to get there early. You I think yeah. you mentioned something on the like similar to the mm. comedy club too. The comedy store. Uh, or a store, yeah. The, the store, uh, they have open mics on Mondays and the line goes way the fuck down the block because it's elbows, man. Everybody's trying to get in and get fucking famous and shit. Everybody wants to be a I goddamn mean, star. Everyone's been there apparently, right? Robin uh, Williams, Sam mm -hmm. Kennison, Eddie and Murphy, the, all the those. The store is the coveted place to go. That's that's where everybody wants to be. Uh, but uh, I wanted to start a little smaller, uh, and you know, I, I I knew my place. You know, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the store four months in. I'm not ready for the store. I was being no. honest with myself. I'm like, I'm gonna go get try to get past at the smaller places first. It's a, you gotta learn how to crawl before you can walk, man. Oh yeah. Um. So on my way to Flappers, um, I see Bert Motherfucking Kreischer walking into a weed dispensary. Your guy. My future father. Your guy. <laughs> Don't make it weird. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it got weird. <laughs> Don't make it weird. So uh, I'm in a lift cab uh, going to Flappers, and I just look out the window. There's Burt Kreischer in flip-flops. You know, he's going shirtless. to the weed store. Yeah, I got you. And he's not shirtless. Damn he's it. Wearing, no, he's, no shirt, no service, man. <sighs> Doesn't matter who you are. But he's walking in the store, and I'm like, oh, cool. There's a guy. Oh, there's Burt Kreischer. All right. <laughs> and um, I do the audition. I get passed. I get passed. First shot. And I get an applause break, too. Like, now, I, who's the owner? The, the owner of Flappers? Uh, I don't know her name. 
Marlboro something. Is Flappers closed permanently, or are they just shut down because uh, of Flappers COVID? is a restaurant. They're they're doing the okay, restaurant. Okay, okay, they're doing you. like takeout orders and stuff. They do virtual shows, but those don't count. Right. Um. So I get my first showcase at Flappers, which is on 420, and I'm thinking back on. I watched Burt Kreischer go into a weed store, and then I booked this show on 420. I'm like, okay, I'm putting the pieces together. I'm like noticing the pattern. I'm like, okay, this is uh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'm supposed to do this. And um, there's like other signs here and there. Like it's it, like how what are the chances of uh, my of the person that taught me comedy when I was 14? Right. To to and to, to bump into her 12 years later, going. Hey, you should you should keep doing this. I'm like, oh shit. And we, I have her number now. That's you know, awesome. I worked on a pilot with her, and uh, I, she, I ask her for advice. Right. And uh, you know, I she points me in the right direction. You know, am I doing the right thing? You know, am I am I heading in the right like trajectory and all that? And I'm going like, oh, I got I got bumped from this show. Uh, you know, what do I do about it? And she's like, talk through your performance, just perform and the right person will notice you right don't pass out fucking cards you know don't mm -hmm. don't don't give off like desperate energy or whatever people will notice you and, and you will get booked because of that you know uh, people will notice you through your act and the right people will come along like you invited me to come on this podcast Next. yeah i'm like all right cool <laughs> you're you're funny man mm -hmm. like that's Thank why you. i had you on yeah. Your, your comedy really, like, resembles, to me personally, this is just who you remind me of. And I hate comparing. Austin mm -hmm. Slaughter told me, don't compare co comics to other comics. But you, your, your humor kind of matches Tom Segura's humor. Oh, shit. No way. Yeah, you're very dark. You're the first person to mention you're, that. You're okay. a very dark person mm -hmm. with your comedy. So is, Tom, so is Tom mm -hmm. Segura. Uh, sometimes I feel like Tom Segura has killed people. I feel like you have... You could probably... Uh, I'm capable. Yeah, exactly. Just like Tom Segura. Hey, I don't plan like... murders out loud, dude. Oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you resemble, with comedy-wise, a lot of Tom Segura. So. Mm -hmm. His style is very shout and freuda, uh, laughing at other people's misery. Yeah. That's what the word means. And, and yeah. you, like with you, you, you're doing your own misery, but I still mm -hmm. see the resemblance with both of you. Yeah. That that thank you. That that's you're the first person to compare me to him. That's interesting because uh, I've uh, my influences are like Sam Kennison and like wild and screaming. You, yeah, and, and I, all that. I, like, I noticed that too. You scream a lot mm -hmm. and everything. So I, I, I would say Sam as uh, well. Sam uh, Sam Kennison. I never met him, but I know people who did meet him. You know, he was a big influence on me. Steve Pearl was another guy that yells uh, a lot, right. and it was, it was just uh, the more ridiculous, the louder you you have to be. He's like, oh, I'm a man. I'm tough. I jerk off with sandpaper. It regenerates like the salamander's tail. It comes back tougher and stronger than before. Mm -hmm. Do not worry. So just pause real quick. Who was the first comic you ever watched or saw? Like, it was it was Tony Rock. Okay. Tony at the Rock. Laugh Factory. Okay. He was the very first one. Um, he, was he the one that's like where you were like, I want to do this? Not not yet. Uh, it, this was in like the public speaking stage. Okay. okay. Um, I wanted to do it when I first saw uh, Steve Pearl. Uh, this is a guy that's not famous. He's the most unknown. No, he's the most known unknown comic I, amongst I, comedians. I've heard about him. Steve Pearl. Uh, he got passed at the comedy store in the eighties. He he was in that era with okay. Sam Kennison and Robin Williams. Now what happened to him is that Robin Williams stole his act. Mm. Yeah, Robin Williams stole his act and got famous, but. What made it okay, it wasn't okay, but what made it okay was that uh, Robin Williams cut him a fat check. And that suddenly made it all right. There was some bad blood. Obviously. Uh, Pearl fucked off to New York City to go do clubs and stuff over there. Went to San Francisco, did uh, headlining tours around the country. Was he using the same material as Robin Williams? Uh, well, they have a similar they have a similar style, but Robin Williams took his shit. So then he had to basically like you know rewrite, rewrite over and over again okay. because Robin Williams was the one that got famous, and they would think and, and people would think, oh, Pearl's the thief. Uh, they, so they it's kind of like versa. a Jay Moore and Burt Kreischer incident. They had the same story. Mm -hmm. They went through the same exact thing. And Jay, I think Jay Moore told the story first, and then Burt was like, "Screw it, I I experienced the same thing," and he tried to put it in his own way. And Jay Moore's like, "If you don't stop, I'm gonna sue you." Yeah. 
So Pearl never got famous, but you know he made uh, he made a decent. He's, he's living. a funny person. He's still. a very funny guy, and uh, I I learned from watching him at the at a place called the Sportsman's Lodge. You know, one of various like uh, comedy clubs that I got snuck into when I was a teenager, and I learned like all the dirty humor. I learned what works. You know, wild comedy works for me because uh, I'm also a very hyperactive person, I and I that. I use the nervous energy. To my benefit, okay. um, I've I've had panic attacks on stage. Really, and uh, you may have not have noticed, but I've been fighting panic attacks while I'm up there, like at Kendall's, at, even at, even here in Oklahoma, at Kendall's, at Bricktown, I I fought multiple panic attacks. You seem so confident. I am not. I'm really not. Underneath this calm exterior, I'm I'm chill. By the way, I'm no, I, fine. I got you. I'm fine now. But like d- the moments before going on stage, paralysis. Yeah. I am. My heart is going a million miles a minute. I've I changed my set five fucking times. You know, the uh, the three comics that went up before have like a similar subject right. angle, and I go, oh, I have to change it. This guy talked about online dating. I have five minutes on online dating. Guess we're not doing that. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And uh, I, I noticed that at mm-hmm. Don's, like you went back into your book one time, and you're like, like because someone might have talked about a subject, and you're like, oh shit. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going through, I'm going through my rants. I'm just going through. Okay, what hasn't been covered yet tonight? Or maybe somebody said something funny that I can tag off of that. Uh, maybe I can roast the guy that went up before me yeah. or whatever. You know, maybe there's something that comes up on the fly. And uh, I, I can't smoke weed before I, I go up. I can't do it. I like weed. It, it just dulls you. It makes me relax. That's the good part. But it also makes me forget. Oh, yeah. yeah. It makes me forget what the fuck I'm doing. I'm calm. I'm good. I don't have the nervous energy anymore. But now I have to work extra hard to be the fucking crazy person that right. that, that, that I that I try to be up there and I, I, I fight it. And, uh, the more I do it, the more relaxed uh, I, I, I am, but there's still that like nervous energy and I use it to my benefit to, uh, you know, bring the, the wildness. That makes me feel so much better about myself yeah. because I'm always just like mm-hmm. a nervous wreck right before, like mm-hmm. you hosted at Bricktown comedy club one night. Oh, I was panicking. That was my like second time I ever did Bricktown comedy. Mm. And like, I was outside. When I you called, called you up early. I'm sorry. Jeez, I, <laughs> I was I, I was outside smoking a cigarette with everyone, and then I hear my name like, "No, Jesus Flores," and I had to run up in there, and you're like, "Daniel Healy, anyone?" <laughs> so what happened was, uh, not everybody. Uh, the list is not accurate to because some people's names are on the list and they don't show up, mm-hmm. which I don't fucking know why people do that. If you're gonna if you're gonna sign up for an open mic, right, and you don't show up. May, you know, maybe maybe you got kids or whatever. Maybe you've got a night job and you couldn't get it covered. But like, notify us. Notify or, us, yeah. and then maybe the the list will get changed or whatever. And whoever runs it, maybe you know Adrian or whoever else. Right. And and uh, there were names that were crossed out. Mm-hmm. And then Adrian was like, "Okay, this name's crossed out. That means this person was next." So I like got a little confused, and uh, I ref- I refuse <laughs> to bring up that notebook with me. I want to be a good no, host. I got you. I yeah. want to get the name right. I instead I, of holding the clipboard and be like, uh, I don't want to do that. Right. That's not what a host does. That's no. not what a good host does. I also, I never, I almost never bring up my notebook. Mm. I brought up my notebook one time, and that was when my Disney rant got stolen at a at a Zoom show, you, and you I got pissed that off. To me. I got pissed off, and then I just I just read the Disney rant because I, I was mad and all that. I felt violated, but I do not bring papers with me up there. I record my sets as much as I can, and uh, I, I fucked up, and I called your name up too early, and I'm I, like, ah, damn it. That was a terrible set for me, too, mm-hmm. but, I mean... Yeah, well, you got rushed a little bit, and that's all my fault. Well, also, at the same time, when I go up on stage, I notice they don't always do the light. Have you noticed that? Um, or am I just am I just blind as I, that? Uh, you know what? You know what I think it was? Um, the guy that runs the light, whoever that is, They'll shine the light, but you're not looking. Mm. So they'll catch you on a cider, and uh, you, you won't you just get, miss it. And if you happen to miss it, you know it, it's it's then then it's up to the guy doing the light to give you the light one more time so that you know that your time is running out. Right. Not everybody has the muscle memory. Like I, I most of the time know how much time I'm doing, and I kind of know what's going on, but it happens. 
I always you know? get to, I, 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 I always go to the music, apparently. Yeah, like, it, it, so what you have to train yourself to do is that you have to, you know, just put most of your of your set just looking in that general direction. Got you. Or, and look, you know, look forward, because the light is is off to the left. Spend most of your set just looking forward and, and you know, doing your thing. And uh, if you're doing, like, an act out or whatever, mm-hmm. if you end up, like, on the on the floor right. or whatever, just, you know... Keep, keep it in your peripheral. Yeah, just keep it in your peripheral. And uh, you, you've got to know where the light is. You know, sometimes, you know, at Kendall's, you know, Brandon's sitting somewhere and Some, he, he'll give you the light. you, you got to know where, where they're where Brand, at. Yeah, wh- yeah, whoever, if it's an open mic, like, smaller one, like Kendall's or JJ's or all of those, mm-hmm. usually it's easier to see the light because it's coming from a phone. So, like... Yeah. And no one's usually flashing phones when you're doing a, set, a small mic. At the comedy club, it's right above you, mm-hmm. and they change colors, like red for a split second, and then it turns back to normal colors. I I swear I have never seen red for me, but at the same time, mm-hmm. I am looking out to the crowd. I am trying to get into the crowd, try to get a feel. I'm not really yeah. paying attention. I'm just getting into whatever I can. Well, it's just muscle memory. You just got to keep doing it. You know, you'll you'll get better and better as you go. And, uh, it, you know, if, if you think about giving up, I give up like every day. <laughs> Okay, I, right. I give up every fucking day, and I wake up, and it's the present. Well, Adrian has told me that he, like, you're going to have, like, those bad days. You're just going to be like, you want to quit. Mm-hmm. He's like, don't. Even if you have the worst days or whatnot, just keep doing what you need to do yeah. and stick with it. So, Here, here's, here's a reason not to quit. There, there are guys that I know that have been in the game 10, 15 years or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're on tour. On tour. Sounds great, right? And they bomb a set on that tour. No laughs for 15 minutes straight. Nothing. That's hard. That's right. rough. You want to quit, but you're on a tour. Right. You can't quit. You got to pull up your socks and just do it again. And hopefully the next town is a little bit better. I just feel like, uh, so like when you do tour and you start getting paid for mm-hmm. your comedy, when you bomb. <laughs> One day, shit. <laughs> when, yeah. when you bomb, for me, I'm like, I, I can't take the paycheck if I bomb. Like if I don't make anyone laugh, why? Am I getting paid? Oh no, you'll it, still you know? get paid. I understand still you'll happen. still get paid, but mm-hmm. like just how I was brought up, it's like I don't deserve this. That's right. the inner me. Just like I'll look at that, you know, fifty dollar paycheck and just be like, oh. yeah, that's that low self esteem that that a lot of comics suffer. It is a lonely <laughs> business. Uh, it is also a selfish business. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and you know you just got to roll through the punches. And uh, you've been doing it a little less than a year. Uh, uh, my friend Christy, who's been doing it for seven years. I, she, we, we call, we talk and she's like, oh, I want to quit. I have a bad set. And I'm like, bitch, if you wanted to quit, you should have quit five years ago. <laughs> if you wanted to quit now and you're seven years into the game, you should have quit a long time ago. Right. You wasted your s- yeah, seven years uh, of your life. Honestly, no one's going to give a fuck about you until you're in 10 years. You know, well, how old are you? I'm 25. You're 25. Okay. You're 25. So when you're 35, uh, you'll be 10 years in. Right. Uh, Tim Dillon is 36. Tim Dillon is barely getting on the map. I was just about to say, he's finally just getting out there. He's just barely getting on the map. I mean, like, his podcast is great. You know, he was on Rogan a couple times. You know, he got, he exploded because of Rogan. Because of Rogan, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, before that, he had had just been doing clubs and stuff. And he gets paid. You know, he's a relatively known comic, but he's not on the map. Right, right, You know, he's, he's not among... He wasn't among the uh, elite uh, groups he's, of comics. He's not like Chappelle or Rogan, right? Mm-mm, yet. No, but, but like now he's on he, that. Yeah. he's on that map now, and that just takes hustling and being, uh, you know, just being good and being funny. And the road to that, it, it's it's habit forming. You just well, have to get funny. Also, Burt mm-hmm. Kreischer, he didn't become famous until like three or four years ago with his machine story. Yeah, and he's now to this day is like forty eight, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but mm-hmm. like, he started when he was twenty six. Yeah, he, he's forty eight now, just finally getting up where Bill Burr and Tom Segura mm-hmm. are, and that's crazy to think that. How many years is that? That's almost two decades. Rodney basically. Dangerfield was in his sixties when he made it. Yep, and that's through you know decades and decades of like drug problems and shit like that. Right, so, right. You know, it, it is a low art. Uh, Stand up is not. A respected art amongst you know the Hollywood types or whatever. Really, but uh, I mean, dude, there's no future. There's no future, so you might as well do whatever you want. Yeah. As long as you have a roof over your head and you're able to do comedy, 
uh, and you're able to, you know, make, make a the, decent, make living. the necessary sacrifices. Yep. You know, uh, I'm still running off of the unemployment money from Daddy Trump, and I'm gonna let that ride until it doesn't, uh, and then I'll probably do like the Postmates hustle or something. Okay. So, because that way I can work during the day and get on stage. Yeah. I, and j just get on stage. That's a great idea. At, at least three nights a week, or at least four nights a week. So, let's circle back to you. Mm -hmm. What brought you out here to Oklahoma? The global pandemic. <laughs> but, okay, but specifically, mm -hmm. like, why Oklahoma? Just family out here? I or? have a cousin in Dell City, okay. and I have an aunt in Ponca City. Which isn't too far from here. Yeah, it's north of us, so that's so handy. I have some family in these parts to to help me, uh, you know, you know, get a car. I didn't get my, I didn't get a car in L.A. I yeah, never well, had. A I car. mean, there, there's yeah. no reason to. Right. Uh, thing is, I I never had one, and I finally got one here because uh, I spent my money on a six month lease on an apartment, and then like another three thousand on a car, and I've just been, and there's the rest that's put away. But uh, I have family out here, and they were able to help me, and it's open, you know? Right. It, it, everyone's like, why not Texas? I'm like, I don't fucking know anyone in Texas. No. Yeah. You know, I, I, needed, I needed some help. I was actually about to just ask you, why not Austin? Fuck Austin. <laughs> here's why fuck Austin. Because uh, the comedy scene uh, the comedy scene in L.A. basically just moved, moved to, to Austin. Austin. L.A. is dead, and it's going to be dead for at least four years. Um, it's the new Detroit. And, and pretty much, yeah. And Austin, you know, keep Austin weird, but keep Austin surrounded. Austin's cool, whatever, fine. But the thing is, all of the same fuck-off people now live in Austin. And now Austin's going to become a shittier, sensitive place. So you don't think the people coming from California escaping whatever's happening there mm -hmm. is going to... The, so the problem's not being solved, it's just being moved. Got you. There's, the problem with L.A. was that there was too many people. Now there's, there's gonna too be, many people. Now in there's Austin. gonna be too many people in Austin or Dallas or, or Dallas or yeah, wherever. Right, right, right. It's it's all Rogan's fault. It's all Elon Musk's fault. It's it, it, it's all their fault. And you know, it's not a bad thing. No, it makes sense because of what's happening in California. Yeah, well, just I want. But... I needed to move here because something didn't smell right. It's it just you know the the besides the tent cities. I got besides you. Besides the tent cities, <laughs> besides the COVID, um, the. It was like the, the George Floyd thing happened and people were protesting and rioting. I had to board up the store that I was working at under the table. And there was an earthquake on the seventh night of the protest. Ooh. It was a small earthquake. It wasn't like a big deal. And I was like, all right, okay. There's, there's too many bad things happening consistently. I and I don't want to be here when it gets worse. Right. And guess what? It got worse. Oh, yeah. My flight uh, was on July 6th. I got up at four o'clock in the morning. I smelled fire because the wildfire season had just That's started. Right. I'm like, time to get out. And I fucking left. And then uh, a couple months ago, you know, the, the COVID numbers were going way up because what happens is people fuck off and go leave to wherever they came from for the holidays. Right. And then they come back. Mm. So like one in three people in L.A. County were getting infected and all that. I'm like, I don't want to fucking be here. I don't want to be here. It's fascinating that they say Florida, Oklahoma, and Texas are the worst places for COVID. Mm -hmm. But if you look at population-wise, yeah, LA is... It's not nearly as bad. Oklahoma is a smaller city. Uh, it, so, you know, people are more spread out. Right. You know, uh, so uh, people are less likely to get the, the COVID and right. all that shit. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I like it here. Um, there's tornadoes, whatever. <laughs> Just wait till the spring. You'll love it. Yeah, it'll be great. Um, my first weekend here, I never heard a tornado siren before, and I thought it was the fucking purge. And I'm like, oh shit, it's too late. I didn't get here in time. It's all over. You know? <laughs> I, I was actually, I was actually here um, March 14th through the 17th. Ooh. I was here day one of the lockdown. Oh yeah. I had not taken a vacation in about two years. Um, I, I actually wanted to go to Florida. Uh, because there was a there was a giant nerd con over in Florida that I wanted to go to Comic Con or just nerd con? Uh, it was it was actually a pod uh, podcast oh nerd con. God. It was they have those? Yeah, they have those. And they're Malachi, going. we gotta go check that out. Bro. Don't do it. Don't do it. Really? It, you know what it is? I, I learned that it's a huge networking event for nerds uh, to do. Like, oh, listen to my podcast. Oh, oh. listen to your podcast. It's just dumb. It, 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 mm. And the whole point of the con was <clears> to teach people how to do a podcast. And you already know what you're doing. Kind yeah, of, but yeah. <laughs> network, no, no, you, networking is pretty... Uh, it is important, but it's not going to... It's only going to get you so far. Because I have famous friends. 
and I could have them on my podcast that my viewership will skyrocket hey. for their episode. But when it goes back to, it's just going to go back to the same fucking thing. So got it's you, like, got who, you. who gives a shit? So just, but you, you know, might've been able to just thinking, you might've been able to pick up some trailers who got over there to your, maybe you know, that's the whole point of the networking though, because you'll yeah. get those spikes and dips and ups and maybe, you know, maybe they'll stay on a little bit longer. Some of them who did come on because of one special person you mm-hmm. had on and you just have to keep that growth. It's in also, mind, it's also than, about yeah. your guest and just the material you're giving out too, mm-hmm. like your content. If you keep up what you're doing, which what yeah, you're I have, doing is I have amazing. A couple of, I have a handful of listeners, some in Europe, some in like, some I've never even like, I don't know anybody in Dallas. I don't know anybody in Bulgaria or Germany. The Huey cast has reached out to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. What up? <laughs> <laughs> and we just lost them. And we just lost them. <laughs> yeah, what a go. bomb. Oh. But yeah, my first week, at, uh, my first time, uh, my my fourth time actually out here because I have family and stuff, uh, was like day one of the lockdown. Wow. And I only had like a week's worth of clothes. And mm-hmm. uh, my cousin, took, she strapped a gun to her uh, her hip and she's like, we're going to go to Walmart. I'm like, we're just getting groceries. Why are you getting a gun? And it was like, you know, it was the great toilet paper it's horde. The apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, it was like, we didn't know what the fuck was going on. And I'm just watching the TV going, don't cancel domestic flights, please. I don't want to get stuck here. I don't want to get stuck here. I only have like a couple of days worth of clothes on me. You know, and so I just, I, I, I uh, my boss fired me. Oh. I could, I started stockpiling the unemployment mm-hmm. and just like hunkered down for a couple of months. And then right. I just packed my shit and left. And now I'm okay. here. I plan on being here for a good while. We're okay. right in the center. It's, it's good to hear that you're going to be around mm-hmm. for a while. What I'll do you think, around. what do you think about the comedy scene here? Compa- it's nothing compared to LA, obviously. Or- well, I don't smell desperate energy. <clears throat> that's good that's what i don't smell that's what i like about it it is a smaller scene you do get uh you know it, it's you can't really do the same jokes twice necessarily right you know because it's it's smaller but people actually want to laugh yeah open mics in la it's it's mm-hmm. comics waiting their turn they're there to they don't give a fuck about you I yeah they you. don't listen to you they're thinking about and it's not personal they're thinking about their stuff. They're right. thinking about what the fuck they have to do to be funny. But the open mics here, oh my God, there's actual crowds. Yeah. There's people that are more likely to pay to, uh, you know. Come see you. Come or, see you, yeah. you know. And uh, so it would be easier to get traction in the Midwest because it's it's the middle of America. And that, right. these are the people that watch the most TV and all that stuff. So, you know, get funny here. And then, you know, if, if L.A. becomes a phoenix and rises from the ashes, maybe, you know, maybe I'll go back over there. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Denver is up north. Texas True. is south. Arkansas, Missouri, we're right in the middle. I could drive three, four hours in any direction. I'm Correct. in some town that's fucking open. Right. No, know? yeah. <clears throat> and maybe they'll be open in the future. But, uh, I don't know, time will tell. As long as I'm able to put in the reps and get on stage, I don't give a fuck where I live. <laughs> I don't care. No, that, I can live I'm... anywhere. As long as you get those rep- reputations and mm-hmm. get your name out. Yeah, I agree. Going back to you living in L.A., mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you quit for 12 years. Mm-hmm. You went back when you were roughly... 27, 27 28. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> you started at the Laugh Factory. Yep. When did you get to the comedy club Because or a comedy store? Be- I keep calling it a comedy club because yeah. we have a comedy club here. That's comedy right. store. Uh, uh, the store, uh, well, I felt, well, I did, I found out uh, like six months in uh, that they had an open mic on on Mondays. Okay. I work Mondays. Mm. I get, I clock out at, at five o'clock, and I gotta dr- I gotta, you know, get a lift over over to the store. And the thing is, I'm there at, at six. The the lines are super fucking long, and um, and you were only a block around. I was from a block there, around, right? so and it, it, it took you an really, hour to get there. Still, it's yeah. a hard nut to crack. So it's easy to lose hope. Uh, for that, uh, I also have gastrointestinal issues. Mm. I, uh, if I have to use the bathroom, uh, I, I can hold it, but it's painful. But at that time, uh, I wasn't yet diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Um, so I would lose my spot in line so I could go shit behind a dumpster mm. somewhere. Yeah. Literally shitting behind a dumpster. Yeah, shit behind a dumpster. That's California, I guess, yep. huh? Yep. Cool. Uh, that's because, you know, I don't, I don't shit right. It, on, on a good day, it looks like shredded lamb on a gyro sandwich. Ooh. But, like... Um, you just destroyed... Yeah, I ruined your appetite. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it's... Uh, you're waiting in line. You're waiting outside. And uh, there's no bathroom. And uh, I just have to eat nothing the whole day. So that doesn't happen. That. 
Yeah, so that doesn't happen. And uh, then, you know, uh, out of out of the 200 people that are waiting in line, maybe 40 get to, get to up. go up and do three minutes. And how is it like uh, is it like the Looney Bin here where you sign up and then they do a, a drawing? It's exactly like okay. that. Uh, the, the Laugh Factory has a similar method, too, where they have an open mic on Tuesdays, but they only let like six to ten people up. Mm. Uh, the Looney Bin lets about six to ten people up. But if you get there early, you will get that spot. But you got to okay. be hungry for it. Okay. You got to be the hungriest. I get I get off at six is the problem here. So uh -huh. it's. By the time I get there, like everyone's like be there by six thirty to sign so up. So what you like, do is get work covered two weeks in advance or whatever, right. and you know pick that day and make it happen. Um, and look at the schedule on Looney Bin's website because they don't always do it on on Wednesdays. They don't okay. do it every Wednesday. Sometimes they have some special event or whatever, and they're I didn't doing know like that. something. That's interesting. Yeah. So on their calendar, if there's a red line with comics name or whatever, that's a special. Uh, occasion and they won't do the open mics that night if it's a blue line um blue means go blue means go red means no and um so uh I i'm scheduled to do bricktown on the 17th uh but uh, but the thing is the looney bin has a blue line on the 17th i'm mm -hmm. gonna do bricktown just because my name's on there and right. i'm gonna do my time but uh go to bricktown i mean go to go to the looney, looney bin. bin go to the looney bin on the 17th or or the next week after and just, you know, do four minutes. They do want you to be clean. Right. Um, you, you know, you just say whatever you want. Just don't say fuck. Right. Um, and that's an important discipline, too, because... That's what a lot of com uh, comics have told me. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a good comic, mm -hmm. go clean first and yeah. learn your go material. Clean. You, can, you can, you know, talk about whatever you want. Just don't cuss because the day will come. The day will come where you will tour in Salt Lake City. And the Mormons do not like cussing. They don't like it. Depending on the room, so it, it's that. it's a good disciplinary uh, muscle to have. So you can still you can still be funny and not have to say fuck shit cunt ass, or or, or whatever. There's something you. there's something called the fuck meter. Um, there's there's comics I won't name names. Some of them say fuck a little bit too much. Yep. And fuck loses its power. Now there's only really a, a handful of uh, comics mm -hmm. can that can say cunt really. Yeah. Like uh, Jim Jeffries for Jim, instance, because over he's British or he's Australian, Australian or, whatever, or yeah. whatever. So like. That's a norm yeah. over there. Cunts is, is their shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it it really depends. Like Bill Burr can kind of get away with it, but thing is, he if you notice Bill Burr say the c word, he says it like maybe once or twice. Right. Yeah. He doesn't go berserks with it. And it's even funnier because I have a friend who who uh, is very like conservative, doesn't like cuss or anything like that. But when she gets mad, she'll she'll cuss, sure. and it has like the most power because I'm like, oh, she's pissed. <laughs> She's pissed off because she said fuck. I'm like, okay, let's simmer down a little bit. So, right. um, you know, be aware of the fuck meter. Okay. Um, you know, because it, it loses its power. Because uh, there's there, there was a guy that performed at the Looney Bin, and he just went off the handle anyway. Oh, no. And he doesn't give a fuck. And it's just like, dude, you're not going to get booked here. Just, I know you want to be rebel rebellious and, like, right. not follow the rules or whatever. <laughs> but, like, I heard it's a the game. It's an older crowd, too. A little like, bit older, yeah. yeah. So, like, be nice. Right. Be nice. I made the mistake of doing dirty material in front of old white ladies. I did a story about, um, I have a bit on uh, eating a girl out while she was on her period. Ooh. Pretty okay. disgusting. Yeah. Works great at the bars. <laughs> Not so much when it's like a book show and it's mostly old white ladies. Yeah. Yeah. The punchline is that I looked like the Wilson ball <laughs> from Castaway, and they hated that. Ooh, they hated it. Because I just oh, kept, okay. like, I kept going further. Into, Digging into, into it. the description of the chunky salsa, you know, I had the taste of blood in my mouth. I thought she bit me or whatever, you know, it was, it was just nasty. But I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't I wasn't paying attention to the room. You right. got to be able to read the room. Um, you know, uh, kind of like at Bricktown before you go up, you know, you know just kind of look at the crowd. See who's laughing at what, you know. Okay. And maybe you got maybe you got an angle on them. You know, if, if, if it's mostly ladies, talk about how you are a single piece of garbage. They love that. That's a good point. Yeah, they love that. If it's mostly if it's mostly men, talk about cars, you know, or do your kidnapping right. story. Yep. Men toward men lean towards more uh, darker humor. I've noticed. I don't know. Depends on. I don't know. I might be painting with a broad brush here, but like, uh, uh, I feel like men mm -hmm. get jokes a little more. I'm not yeah. trying to be sexist here, but yeah. like men would under will understand you and my. Mm -hmm. comedy a little well not my comedy yeah. my comedy's bullshit but the point is like men are more open i guess yeah the, and women are kind of like 
they I'm respond trying, I'm more trying to, to be her. very careful here because it's going to make me sound fucking you sexist. Need, you but. don't need to be careful. You just women uh, women tend to respond more to sexual humor. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and male incompetence. <laughs> Talk about how stupid you are. Right. Or something. You know, they they'll respond to that. But don't talk about how stupid women are, because you're a white man. Right. You know, it it won't work. I, I've noticed that like abortion jokes seem to work, and I'm like, wait, it's the Bible Belt. That, that's that's it, going over well in, here. I'm like, okay, it's <laughs> interesting. Right. Yeah, brings out your inner kid. Okay. <laughs> uh, sir, going back to the comedy store, you mm-hmm. said 200 people are waiting outside. Do they only use one room? Because they have three rooms. They have the belly room, the OR, mm-hmm. and the main room. One room. Really? Yeah, they do it. They they do uh, they do the main room early. Okay. They they do the main room early. I could be wrong. Either it's the OR or the main room, but they do one of those rooms early before like the main show. Okay. So there is a main show on Monday still. There is a main show. Well, there there's also Kill Tony when Kill Tony was over oh, there. That's right. Um, so you could sign up for Kill Tony as well. Uh, but well, that's another thing that's random. You got to pick a name out of the bucket. It, well, it's a it's a crapshoot basically. The only reason I mentioned that is like there's 200 people. I feel like you could get more people in mm-hmm. and doing open mics in all three rooms instead of just mm-hmm. doing one room. You can but... still go and watch. Like you right. can watch the show. Like you just you know you won't get on the list. And gotcha. you can either you can either go home and put your tail between your legs and cry like a little bitch. Right. Or you can at least watch the show and you might learn something. Gotcha. You might see who sucks. Who doesn't suck? You know, uh, you 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 just might make friends with the doorman, the doorman. doorman. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, Mitzi died in in '08 or or whatever it Did was. Did you at all get to? Okay. No, no. I I missed the boat on that because uh, uh, she she was getting like too old to go there, and I was in high school when she was like at the tail end of her career. Well, you just mentioned you didn't. Mm-hmm. You started 14, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, if you... yeah. No, I wasn't going to the store yet. Okay. Uh, but, Thing is, I went. I went to the store once, uh, and I got lucky once, and it was a crapshoot. See, because I didn't have a car, so uh, a lift ride to my place and back to the comedy store is like sixty bucks, because of like traffic and like the timing mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So I'm like, do I really want to spend like half a yardstick just to go up, possibly right. for three minutes? So I was just kind of like weighing my. I was hedging my bets, just kind of like, all right, I'm not ready for the store yet. The store will be there, hopefully, when I return. But, you know, hedge your bets. Go do some other room that's closer because there's an open mic every 10 feet in L.A. Uh, I was able to do four mics in a night. Come to think of it, there's Mm. an open mic here in Stillwater tonight. Do that. I didn't think about that. Willie's bar where Garth Brooks started. Mm. They do music, and then if you're a comic, you just walk up and be like, hey, can I get some time? And they're like, how much time do you have? I'm like, "I, I don't know. And they'll be like, just go until you can't. Right. Yeah, they give you as much time as you want. So the other band or whatever, when mm-hmm. they're shifting out everything, yeah, you get to yeah do that. And you got to drive for an hour into town. So that's you know you got to make some sacrifices. Right. At least you have time to like go over your set, figure out what, uh, excuse me what you want to say and all that stuff. Um, it, you know you you don't have the benefit of being in a bigger town where there's more open mics, but at least you know you can you can do it. That's what I want to change about Stillwater, like uh, that open mic here in Will- at Willie's, but I, I've been talking to a whole bunch of other bars and everything, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, can we get an open mic going? And they're like, do you have equipment? I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah, you got to buy a, you gotta buy a, a, mic, a and, mic and a yeah. stand and like a PA system, you know, so there's sacrifices you right. have to make. Like, I've invested over $1,000 into my podcast. And, and it, uh, I like your podcast. It's thank amazing. You. And it's, you know, it doesn't look like this. This looks amazing, by the I, way. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I would want mine to look like this. It's, it's all day. him, man. It's all him. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, dude, it, it's, I, I'm impressed. It, it looks great. You know, I'm working with the bare bones and I've spent the money that I've spent. And uh, I have a Patreon to kind of like make a little bit back. But, uh, you I, know. I love hearing your neighbors sometimes. Tooth yeah. and claw. My na- you hear my neighbors? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you mentioned, you mentioned <laughs> it in a podcast. Like, mm-hmm. you were doing a single by yourself. Mm-hmm. I think it was, like, episode 67 or something like that. Oh, yeah. And you're like, sorry about my neighbors. They're mm-hmm. fighting right now. And yeah, like, there, there, was a, there, was a, there was a drug problem. There, ah. was a, there was a fight going on outside, and I got distracted. Uh, also, th- there's the people that live above me. Like you don't, you don't catch it on right. the microphone. Doesn't catch it, but like I hear the headboard creaking. Like I hear people fucking up there, and oh, I'm wow. trying to like not bring it up, you know. Or sometimes you know the you know someone's working the lawnmower or whatever, and I gotta wait and all that. I, I try to, you know, I I should have put out an episode earlier because uh, I I try to do it every week. Yeah, that's what we try. To do I as get well. I get discouraged sometimes because I don't get the 
I, I, I get the analytics back from an episode and it's not a whole lot of people. I'm like, why the fuck am I doing this? this is because yeah. it's it's just some it's something yeah. to keep you busy, mm-hmm. something to get your name out. Yeah. Like don't don't you know, don't yeah. give up on it. Obviously you're not. You're yeah. <clears throat> you're doing you. So. Well, I think about it, you know. And sometimes the occasional gold nugget shows up. Yep. I might say something funny off the cuff and I'll and I'll listen to the playback and I'll put it out and I'm like, ah, there's a there's a fucking setup punchline right there. there. It's it's something, man. Do you write? I do write, yes. Yeah. Everyone tells me do a punchline first, then go back and write. Because that works. I, I had Austin Slaughter mm-hmm. uh go over like my jokes slash stories and my book. And he's like, Where's the punchline? Oh. And I was like, I mean, I, I, I don't know. He's like that's what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Write out a punchline, then go back and mm-hmm. write the story. Or so joke. I kicked him in the nuts. All right, what's going to lead up to that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I, I'm still learning. Um, like the ad- abduction slash adoption joke is still in mm-hmm. a work in progress. Like I believe that's going to be like kind of my machine story. Mm-hmm. That, that could easily be five minutes. You, you just got to work out like every detail and uh, you know, you can have it in story form or you could have it in short form. Right. So, and also like that's, uh, I feel like that that's the joke that you tell the most. So uh, that also has to be like your strongest. It's joke, so repetitive. You know? And yeah. I, like, sometimes I won't even do it like for a mm-hmm. month or two. I just let it yeah. go. Don't, be discouraged from it like just practice saying it even if all of the comics in the room waiting their turn have heard right. it for the millionth time it's not because it's not funny it's just because they've heard it a lot so like don't give up on that story definitely open with that or or put that in when you're working with the crowd right definitely put that in and maybe you know when it's other when it's just mostly comics mm-hmm. you can work on other stuff gotcha. you know or per, or perfect that. Or if there's someone at the bar at, at Kendall's or whatever, and they haven't, and it's like an unfamiliar face, try it. If you can get that one person to turn around, that's not even there to watch a comedy show. Right. That's where you win. That's a. I, you don't even have to. You don't even have to get laughs. Just because you don't get laughs doesn't mean you bombed. They're just a, listening to that's you. That's a good point. No. If you could turn, if you could turn a couple of heads at people that are not there to see a comedy show, you win. It might not feel like it. But you did. But you did. Just as long as you get the attention. Mm-hmm. You just got to be able to turn heads and, and get their attention. Cause... Even if they don't laugh, as long as that head turns. Yeah. I have uh, I have stuff where, like, okay, this isn't going to be funny, but this is specifically for shock value. I am trying to get the audience to pay attention to me. Just kind of like in writing class, mm-hmm. they tell you, you know, draw the audience in yeah like uh so there i was with barbecue sauce all over my titties yeah. everyone's gonna be like wait what yeah hold on what a sec so like so there's incest in my family okay i'm i'm huh? interested i'm in yeah i'm in how fucked up is this gonna get right like, <laughs> so like i'll do that and uh god i if they if i ever invite my cousins to a show <laughs> i have to not do that joke <laughs> oh no because they'll get they'll get mad at me is there incest in your family? There is. It's legit. You, you, you've heard me say it. It's it's a hundred percent. I didn't know they, that was a hundred percent. That's one hundred percent. They uh, they uh, they they met. Um, for the sake of your of your audience, I'll I'll tell it a little bit. Um, my uncle had three kids, uh, boy and a girl with one lady, okay. and a girl with some other lady. The the girl over here never met the people Those over two, here. Right. They never met. They. Went, they ended up going to the same high school. They met later in life. Oh, boy. Not knowing. They didn't know. Hey, I like you. Let's go on a right, date. Yeah. You know, and they start, you know, fucking around. They start doing the nasty. You know, <sighs> they, uh, they end up liking each other. Uh, there's a pregnancy. And uh, they still don't know. They have the, you know, they wait till, like, you know, well into the pregnancy oh, no. to, you know, hey, meet my parents. Yeah. Hey, that's my dad. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, oh, shit. We're related. Do we still love each other? We're, it's too late to abort the kid. She's right. she's huge. And the kid's like kind of fucked up. Like, I was going to ask, does it have web feet or anything? No, but uh, her, it... eye, her eyes are a little far apart. She's eight now, and she doesn't know how to read yet. She's a little slow. So it's... Mental, I don't think but... she knows yet. I think there's a little, uh, something's a little off. Um, a life can... is a life, though. I yeah. Mean... She can walk and talk and do all that stuff, but, like, uh, what I'm more concerned for is that little girl's going to find out the truth later. That's, That's what I'm really worried about. a lot really of fucking about. therapy, and they just yeah. made a comic. 
Yeah, they <laughs> they did, they did, and I got two minutes out of it. It's you like know? it's like almost Theo Vaughn. Like he starts out a lot of his sets with uh, "My dad's seventy years old," mm-hmm. and uh, uh, that's you know uh, when I was conceived. So uh, I guess uh, that makes me a comic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like automatically. It's like uh, one guy I know. First joke's on you. <laughs> well, there was a comic guy, I don't remember his name, but he had a joke. He's like, oh, my, my dad's a lawyer. My mom's a prostitute. What does that make me? An asshole. You know? <laughs> it's really good. That is actually really good. I can't, I can't quote it. It's not verbatim, and I don't remember his name, so I'm sorry if, if, you, if uh, it, I don't even know if he's still alive. I don't know, but that's not my bit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, trauma uh, trauma builds character and it makes great jokes. It definitely and does. You, it definitely you've got does. A, you've got an angle on it, man. You just keep doing it. Just don't give up. I appreciate that. Please don't give up. Uh, so you say you want to stay here around five years or so? Five years, four years. Uh, have you touched the Tulsa scene at all? No, you, no. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I might actually get a show on the 18th there. Uh, I, I might do five minutes at Whittier's Bar. I don't know. Fingers crossed. Um, I'll find out. My phone was buzzing not too long ago. I think I'll find out if that's going to happen or not later. Um, but I'm going to do Tulsa on the 18th, maybe. Um, I have a uh, family in Colorado. Okay. Maybe I'll, because uh, I'll find out. What's the comedy club in Denver? There's a big comedy, like I mentioned, uh, or I mentioned Denver because a lot of comedians also talk about Denver and mm-hmm. how well this, I can't remember what the name. I think it's called the Comedy Works. It might be. It might yeah. be even bolder but though, they, I'm not sure. They pay very well mm-hmm. per set. And I was like, hmm, if I can get good, I mean. Yeah, just, you know, record your sets. Do you record video of your sets? I don't record video all the time. I always do audio, though. For Some sure. clubs would want video. Okay. If you can get audio, cool. Uh, if you can get video, that's even better. I have video from all my early stuff. Mm-hmm. But, like, then I was like, this sucks. I'm well, no, your early stuff's no audio. good. Your yeah. early stuff is, is uh, uh, I mean, I haven't seen it. I don't know. But, like, it's it's no good because you're you're better than that now. If, right. if, if you can... um. Like, uh, if you can record a type five and have that type five crush, that's your audition tape. Because okay. a lot of clubs would want to request, you know, uh, they, they want you to have a set or audio because they're mostly looking for laughter, really. Or if you have like a, like a headshot or something. I you. And, and like you have the podcast too. So that lets people know that you're actually like doing something. True. You know, so True. you just put a little package together. And uh, somewhere down the road, you know, you'll find, uh, you, you'll get in touch with a booker in, in Denver and he's like, hey, I'm Daniel Healy. I have a podcast called The Healy Cast. Right. I'm a comedian. Here's a type five. Okay. Got you. Get back to me, you know. Okay. And uh, they'll say yes, they might, they, uh, or they won't say anything, in which case keep bothering them until they say no. <laughs> you know, bother them. Hustle. Just, Got you. You know, it, keep the fucking wheels turning. It's- so in the last two years that you've started back up, mm-hmm. who's the biggest? Have you opened up for anyone? I opened for Jimmy Dore. Okay. Uh, I opened for. Wait, I need to think. I need to think for a second. Um, now when I say open, it's more like a showcase. Like I'm not the opener or okay. the guy. It was just a. So you opened for the opener. Yes and no. The Jimmy Dore situation was a contest. Ooh. Uh, it was a it was a comedy contest, and um, what happened was uh, it, it, I I think I got like fourth place or something, but I was the last one to go up. Okay. And then while the votes were being tallied for the contest, Jimmy Dore went up to like to do like fifteen minutes to okay. sort of like cover the time that it takes to get the votes counted and stuff. So technically, I opened for Jimmy Dore. He's he's like a political comic. And all that, and uh, he really divided his audience there. But um, <laughs> you know, it was cool. Uh, I, I've I've been on the same showcase as Whitney Cummings. I guess I can say that, um, it, even though like she wasn't like a big name at the time yet. Right. But you know that happened. It still counts. I, I mean, I suppose. Yeah, she's big now. She's big now. Yeah, she, she probably didn't wouldn't remember me at all. She produces yeah. uh, Bad Girls or something like she that. She wrote Bad. No, she wrote Two Broke Girls. Two Broke Girls. Yeah, is she the sold one that. That's well. Out. That's what got her on the map. Is that she sold, She wrote that show and sold it, and then she made a bunch of money off that show and, and used that money to like build a comedy is. career. Yeah, that's crazy. and uh, you know she has a podcast too. Um, now, uh, do you do you also write kind of like scripts or anything like that, mm, or are you no, no. more of comedy? Uh, more of a comedy, like just jokes. I mean, okay. I've written, I've taken a screenwriting class, I've taken a creative writing class. I'm right. certainly capable. I just don't do it. What? 
Because with comedy writing, you know, with networks and stuff, it's it's restrictive. Right, and you know? with this podcast, like, if your podcast, you don't have anyone controlling it except for you. Mm, no, I you don't know? even have it. I'm not even prepared. I just I just turn on the the shit and I just go. For certain audio, uh, for certain guests I have, I do come prepared. But mm-hmm. like when it's comics, I mean, we're just sitting down having fun yeah. and whatever. I don't prepare making... shit. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, don't do I don't think there really should be <laughs> preparation. I mean, I watched your uh, podcast mm-hmm. just to get to know you more and uh-huh. like get a feel out, and I definitely wanted you on. I'm like, this dude is funny. This dude mm-hmm. reminds me of Tommy Buns a hundred percent. So you're my Tommy Buns. Just I'm a heads the Tommy up. Buns. Yay! I... You're Nadav. Yeah. No, no, he's my Jamie. This this is definitely a uh, oh. JRE type mm-hmm. of podcast. What's up? Yeah, there's five minutes only. We have five minutes left? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, it just flew by, This man. really did fly by. All Party right, let, time, excellent. Let me get down to the nitty gritty then. Mm-hmm. What is your goal with comedy? You said you're, you don't write scripts. Like uh, a lot of comics that I've had in have it like said, I want to be a novelist or I want to write for a show like SNL or whatnot. Mm-hmm. You just want to stick with comedy. And... I just want to do stand up. I just want to get on stage. If I can make a modest living doing that, I don't care. I don't care. So you don't, you don't put me on stage anywhere. Book me. So you're not worried about getting a special? Or... No, really. It's not even on the, it's, I'm not even a thought because it's probably not going to happen. I, I but no. if it does, cool. I think you'll get a special, dude. Maybe, but that's not on my, I just want to get good first. You, that's all I care about. I just want to get on stage, get good. That's all that matters right now. Netflix special? <laughs> fuck Netflix. I don't give a fuck about Netflix right now. Netflix can suck my left nut. I need that mentality. They got to come to me. I'm not... Fuck that. I mean, like, keep your goals in mind. Right. But, like, don't be so, like... Don't be crazy, you know? Don't, don't, Stay mo- re- don't model everything yeah. after what a network would think. Yeah. Of. Stay in reality. I'm not thinking about Netflix right now. I'm not thinking about Comedy Central. I'm not thinking about doing my own show. I just want to get fucking good. That's it. It's it's, it's a very good point. It, it, there's a lot of room for just to think about the jokes because if you overthink it, you know, then you're trapped. Then you're just trapped. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you're trying to model and try to fit their kind of uh, schedule or yeah, not fuck schedule, them. but yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do my thing. That's a yeah. Very good point. Doesn't I didn't matter. even think about that. Yeah, I have no future, so I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> you have a future, man. Don't say that. <laughs> you, you it's in the back of my head, but that's what I'm telling you. Well, every, com- yeah. every comedian always, like, uh, I've noticed with, like, Bill Burr can't take a, you know, compliment, and I've noticed with a lot of other comedians, mm-hmm. even around here, we're not good at taking compliments. Yeah. We look at, like, other comedians that do compliment us, or yeah. even the crowd, it's like, did you watch my set? Like, uh, that was terrible. I just want to hate myself enough to keep myself honest. That's all. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Jake, you did it. You survived the Healy cast. I survived the Healy cast. Do I get a t-shirt? We are going to make t-shirts. We're going to start making merchandise, so I will hand you a t-shirt once we get merchandise. Cool. For sure. What size are you? I'm a, I'm a medium. I was going to say schmedium, but... Okay. I'm a, sh- a schmedium, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah we'll definitely hand out uh, merchandise. I got to get the funds but i've been looking at shirts and everything and yeah he's got the equipment here is that gonna have this guy on it is absolutely that, is that you with a beard that's me with a beard oh, with shit. Long you know hair. you look like fucking el che and <laughs> you look like che Guevara. you look like albino che i need to update that uh image because i no longer look like that i'm pulling off the machine gun kelly look a little bit yeah yeah <clears throat> looks but good thank you i yeah. appreciate it guys check out do you have anything promote? Check out uh, the Jake Off. Uh, watch the Jaking Off Show podcast. Jake-off. Listen to the Jaking Off Show podcast on Spotify, YouTube, Anchor, wherever the fuck you listen to podcasts. Make sure to um, like and subscribe him, obviously. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, I do rants every week. I'm funny. Book me. Book me! Guys, it's Jake Bassey. Peace. Peace.